All right, here we go. So, Fed Day. Fed met today and they decided that there will be no rate hikes this year. Uh, actually, that was the conclusion when you look at the, the so-called dot plot. That is when the FOMC members themselves put their forecast of how many rate hikes or rate cuts, uh, rate action will occur this year and also next year. For this year, their unanimous decision was there will be no more rate hikes. That doesn't mean it's going to end up that way. It just means that that's what they see for the remainder of the year. That was point number one. Point number two was the Fed uh, said it would now end balance sheet reduction in September. Okay, so we were looking uh, at a target date of around September, October. They clarified that. They said in September it will end balance sheet reduction. So currently, you know, they've been rolling off 50 billion a month. That's 40 billion of treasuries and 10 billion of mortgage-backed security. So that's going to end. Now, you had the obvious zombie reaction in the markets. You had, they sold the dollar, they bought gold, they bought bonds, and initially they, they, the stock market went from being down to basically unchanged to slightly up to slightly down again. So you had that reaction. Now the zombie reaction is probably not going to be sustained. That doesn't mean uh, the trends are going to reverse, but today's move in such things as the dollar and gold, that was so obvious, okay? Everybody who basically doesn't know what they're doing waited for that announcement, jumped in, they all did the same thing, we'll probably get a retracement back into where the prior ranges were, for example, for the dollar, for gold, etc. This doesn't change the longer term picture. What is interesting, however, is that, the Fed, first of all, the end of the rate hikes, which happened in January when they said that's it, that we're done. Now let, let's even go back further to December. That's when Powell got spooked. He got freaked out about the stock market correction, which was just that, a correction. And I told you at the time that the market was going through a correction. It got scared uh, by a number of things, the China-US uh, trade situation, uh, the Fed rate hikes, it was, everybody thought that was, you know, the, the inverted yield curve, that that was going to cause recession, all this stuff. So there was, the market was, was flying high. It went into a correction in December. Powell freaked out and he said, that's it, because you had a lot of people out there saying, you know, the Fed's got to stop. You had Trump. That was another factor. Trump bashing the Fed. So Powell caved in on that. All right. Powell's not an economist. Not that that means anything, but I mean, he's a he's a lawyer. All right. I don't think he really understands uh, the monetary system. I mean, that should be obvious when he said in his uh, reaction to when somebody asked him about MMT. Oh, that's that stuff doesn't work. That's just wrong. Right. Ah, that stuff. He, he doesn't know what he's doing. So he got scared. And so the Fed ended, and there were, there were people on the uh, FOMC who, for a while, leading up to that January decision that they were going to stop rate hikes, there were already people saying, hey, we want to stop. Within the Fed, there were elements, there were uh, members who wanted to stop it. So their voice won out. Balance sheet roll-off, their voice won out too. Now I go back. Let's go back to something that I spoke about several times, which was the, a Fed's, the Fed's survey of the banks. Their own survey came back from the banks with the banks saying, hey, we only need 600 billion of reserves in the system. The Fed asked the banks, well, what, what level of reserves do you feel comfortable with? The banks told them, we only need 600 billion. We're fine with that. We don't need all these excess reserves. Now, the Fed's keeping it at 1.7 trillion. 
I mean, they don't even listen to their own survey, all right? Now, this has implications, and um, I go over this almost on a weekly basis with my subscribers, how reserve balances affect the ability of banks to do such things as make loans or acquire uh, other assets. And it's not what most people think. It's not that, hey, more reserves are good for the banks because they lend out the reserves. No, that's not the way it works. Actually, it's the opposite of that. But here's what's interesting. The end of balance sheet roll-off in September will coincide with the end of the current fiscal year. Right? September 30th is the end of the current fiscal year. Now, if you remember, a couple of weeks ago, Trump came out with his new budget where he wants deep, deep cuts. I talked about this. Deep cuts. Now, we don't know if that's going to be the final budget, and, and most likely it won't be the final budget, but the fact that he's pushing for deep cuts, number one, the fact that uh, deficit reduction is still politically embraced, right? At least they talk about it. They maybe don't do it, but they talk about it. There's a very good chance that we will see by the end of this fiscal year, that means by the end of September, the confluence of factors, number one, the Fed ending its balance sheet reduction. And balance sheet reduction is bullish for the economy for reasons I've explained a million times, right? The Fed is literally putting back high quality, higher yielding assets into the economy. It's ending that in September, and it may come exactly at a time when we do see a new budget for fiscal year 2020 with some major spending cuts in it. And if that's the case, and again, I'm not saying this is ex absolutely going to happen. We have to see. We know absolutely that the Fed's going to end balance sheet roll-off. We don't know about the budget. But if those two things happen, the economy goes into recession, the stock market does go into a recessionary correction. That'll be a bad one and a pretty long-lasting one. And it sets up a whole new set of trading opportunities. That's why you really have to come on board with my service, MMT Trader. By the way, Zombie Trading, which is my daily Forex signal service, right? We front run the zombies and we take their money and get out before they die. Had everybody short the dollar today. So everybody made big money on that. Just want to let you know. All of my stuff is available at pitbulleconomics.com. Go there, sign up for a free trial. Remember, I am the only one who has an applied approach to MMT. I take the concepts of MMT and I meld them in with trading strategies and investing strategies and the all-important mental game. You got to have this, you got to have mental game or it's not going to work. All right, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.